I have been working behind the scenes on a few YouTube channels after the algorithm changed. And after a couple staggering reviews from some of the channels I worked on, word got around that I had figured out the system. I started getting contacted by some pretty big channels, but none as big as geeks and gamers. I was in the middle of watching a documentary about a crime-fighting raccoon when I received a message on Facebook. And to my surprise, it was Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers. He told me his channel had lost 25% of its views, and he keeps getting flagged by the algorithm. He told me if I could fix the issue and return his channel to normal, he would pay me with 10% of his ad revenue for the next six months. Being desperate for money, I accepted the job, and we planned to meet on Monday. I was about to close my laptop when I received another message from Jeremy. Just one more thing, he wrote. You're not black, are you? Because I'm not trying to get ripped off. Not wanting to blow the chance at six months of ad revenue, I lied and said no. He then said great and sent me the address to the Geeks and Gamers studio. I shut my laptop and immediately called my friend Crystal. She was a makeup artist, and during the Halloween season, she worked at a haunted house. I told her about Jeremy not trusting black people, and I needed her to make me white. White face, she said. With your complexion being dark as the night, it may be difficult to pull off, but I think I can do it. She spent the night and in the morning we went to get the supplies she would need. And Monday morning she then started to work her magic. The process took three and a half hours, and her breast smelt like corn chips the entire time. After what felt like an eternity, she was done. I was handed a mirror, and I looked into it to find a white pasty face staring back at me. Holy shit, I said. I'm white as hell. Sorry, I might have overdid it with the baby powder, but I think it looks pretty good. With no time for improvements, I had no choice but to start driving to Jeremy's. It was 45 minutes from my house, and when I arrived, I found the studio to be state of the art far more advanced than any modern design I'd ever seen. I approached the door when a red light started to scan my body. After a brief moment, an alarm began to go off while a robotic female voice repeatedly said, Warning, black person. Guns then surrounded me, and Jeremy came out running, disabling the system. Dear God, I'm sorry. The system must have mistaken you for a black person. I bet you're terrified. It's cool. I said scared as hell. It just caught me off guard. No, Jeremy responded. No white person should ever have to go through that. It was specifically designed for black people. Anyways, come on in. I'll show you around and introduce you to the staff. We walked into the studio, and it was amazing. Everything was new and plated in chrome, and they even had a robot butler. So this is where we talk about why we hate LeBron James, and over there is where we discuss diversity in film, and why it's the worst thing since the civil rights movement. Jeremy said while walking past two meeting rooms. We then walked into a computer room where a 30-something-year-old white man was in the middle of recording a video. Hey, this is Ryan from RK Outpost, 
And today a black man was shot 47 times. And guess what? Black people are upset. Well, I'm sorry. He shouldn't have ran a red light. The man then ended the video and noticed me and Jeremy watching him. Oh, jeez. I didn't even hear you come in. That's all right, Ryan, Jeremy said. I just want to introduce you to the man that's going to change this channel. Ryan stood up to shake my hand when a look of concern crept on his face. You know what? For a white guy, you sure smell like fried chicken. Nervous because I just had Popeyes before heading over there. I just said that I worked at KFC part-time. Oh, thank God. I thought you were a black guy in disguise. Anyway, I gotta go make a video about how much I hate LeBron James for wanting equality for black people. I'll see you guys later. We said our goodbyes. And then Jeremy led me into his office within the computer lab. And he started to show me his channel. I looked through his thumbnails and made a few suggestions. I then asked him to show me the tags he was using. What I saw next was the most unholy and racist propaganda my eyes had ever seen. I'm not saying Jeremy is racist, but the things he thought to use as tags made me fear for my life. I told him that it was likely YouTube's algorithm that deemed his tags racist and his channel had been flagged by the system. Racist, Jeremy said with disgust. You tell me one racist thing about my tags. Well, this one says why I hate black people for starters. Since when is hating black people racist? Jeremy said annoyed. But wanting to fix his channel, he agreed to change it. After four hours of removing racially insensitive content from his channel, we noticed that his views had already began to increase. God damn, you're good, Jeremy said. Thanks. Well, I gotta get going. I'll send you my bank account information and let me know if you have any more questions. Wait, Jeremy said. You can't leave yet. At 7, we're doing a live stream about why we hate Tyler Perry, and it's going to be great. I declined, and Jeremy was clearly upset. He again thanked me, and extended his hand out for me to shake it. I did, and after I pulled away, Jeremy looked at his hand confused. What in God's glorious name is this? Makeup? Jeremy said while rubbing his hand on his shirt. Well, uh, I gotta go, I said while making my way towards the door. Wait one cotton pick in second. I smell deceit. Jeremy then grabbed my wrist and looked at my hand, which began to reveal some of my black skin. I knew it. You're black, Jeremy said. I then started to run for my life, when Jeremy told Ryan to stop me. Ryan got up from his computer and pulled out a lightsaber. The only thing I like black is my coffee, Ryan said as he began pursuit. He was right on my tail and gaining ground quick. When I reached into my pocket, and luckily there was a banana I had from lunch. I removed the banana and threw the pill behind me and Ryan stepped on it, causing him to lose balance and sending him crashing into a vending machine near the exit. I ran through the doors and never looked back, and it's been weeks since I helped Jeremy. He ended up not paying me after all. He said it was because I was black and lied about it. I didn't care. I was just grateful I made it out alive. Anyways, like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more true scary stories.